Hey TMSG community, Carlo Cantino here with John Neconetti. And in today's episode, we'll be discussing the changes to the capital gains inclusion rate. So if you do like our content, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel, provide us with a comment or give us a like. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the changes that are happening to the capital gains inclusion rate. This is going to be effective for corporations, trusts, and individuals uh, as of June 25th of this year. John, why don't you get us started? Perfect. Thank you, Carlo. So just like you mentioned, uh, the biggest thing, uh, in our opinion, that came from the budget uh, in regards to uh, what can individuals expect now in terms of changes is going to be the change to the capital gains inclusion rate. So what does that mean? So for individuals specifically, so um, primarily this is going after people with maybe rental properties, cottages, things like that. Um, any capital gain above $250,000 will now have the inclusion rate of two thirds or 66.6%. Previously, all capital gains were just 50% added in as taxable income on your tax return. So why I say this is impacting primarily those with uh, real estate and cottages, well, that's where you're going to tend to get the bigger forms of capital gains uh, in there for, uh, for them. Uh, where now we have also for corporations and, and trusts, like you mentioned, every new dollar uh, of capital gains is getting taxed at that 66% inclusion rate. So a pretty big hit on our uh, self-employed individuals or uh, individuals with corporations that do have investments within their holdings. So it's often getting overlooked now of how much of an impact this is actually going to have on individuals. So Carla, why don't you walk through an example, I guess, of how this could impact uh, you. For those of you fortunate enough to have a second property, whether it be for recreational purposes, like a cottage or investment properties, uh, rental properties, you will be impacted if you don't sell your property before June 25th. Typically with real estate, you are going to see those significant capital gains, especially if you bought these properties a long time ago, just given the increase to real estate uh, value in the GTA and all around Ontario, you could definitely see capital gains greater than that $250,000 mark. So to give you an example of the actual tax implication, let's take a property that was purchased at $100,000 and you're now selling it for $1.6 million. That's a $1.5 million capital gain. Previously, only 50% of that would have been taxable. So $750,000 would have been added into your income for the year and you'd pay tax at your marginal tax rate. After the changes to the capital gain inclusion rate, the, on a $1.5 million capital gain, the first $250,000, the inclusion rate is 50%. Then the next $1.25 million in capital gains, will 66.6% .6 of that will be included into your income. Yeah, and, and we've always kind of thought that this was a direction that the government could go because they are going to want to recuperate a lot of tax dollars for what we went through in COVID and, and uh, there was a lot of speculation I guess as how can they uh, do so and, and this was one of the options that the capital gain inclusion rate could be played with um, and, and now that we know what's upcoming well, what are our options right so if you were already on the fence or, or thinking about making um, a sale to, to one of your properties maybe this is the extra motivation to get that done ideally before the deadline. This takes effect June 25th of 2024, so your deadline to, to make any sort of sale will be June 24th. The other part of that as well that you need to consider is when we are adding that taxable income now um, to your tax return, one of the options you've always had was to make a large contribution to an RSP if you have the available contribution room in order to reduce your taxable income for that year. So now at this higher inclusion rate, it only makes more and more sense to be able to offset that with an RSP contribution. So an option that you still have. The way that a capital gain is calculated is the fair market value minus the cost. That cost is what it took to purchase that real estate property and how much was put in uh, to the property for improvements, mm -hmm. renovations, that sort of a thing. If you have the receipts and can prove it to the CRA, you can increase that cost base, thus reducing the overall gain. Correct, Carlo. So couple things to consider there, um, just like you mentioned, you know, this is something that's relatively new to Canadians. So if you do have questions about it, let us know. You can always reach out to our office directly and we would always be happy to assist you. Uh, let us know down in the comment section below, is this capital gain inclusion rate going to be impacting you, maybe your corporation, uh, maybe that rental property that you're looking to sell. Uh, but as always, if you did enjoy this video, remember to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But until next time, I'm John Iaconetti. I'm Carlo Cancino, and this has been 
Hasta la próxima.